Lloyd Banker still with us, and leading striker Ken Eady, who's missed so much of the season. Stevie Kerrigan continues up front following his transfer from Albion Rovers to partner Craig Flanagan. And the only change from last week is Steve Jack preferred to Johnny Walker in midfield. But the best known player in that lineup is Davy Cooper, now 38 years old, and passing on the benefit of the vast experience he's gained at Rangers and Motherwell and with Scotland. Clearly, he won't be around too much longer, so every performance must be savoured, even if the legs work a little more slowly these days. And Falkirk have the good fortune to have most of their top players available. Only Joe McLaughlin is unfit, with Jamie McGowan likely to drop back into defence beside David Weir, John Hughes and Neil Oliver. But the principal threat to Clyde Bank in goal-scoring terms will come from Richard Cadet, who missed last week's game against Hamilton through injury. His 27 goals this season earned him the accolade of First Division Player of the Year, and promotion would cap a memorable season. And the match referee this afternoon is Mr. Bobby Tate from East Kilbride, who's in his sixth season as a Grade 1 official. Well, the stadium has a 10,000 capacity almost, and it's almost full for this vital match, as far as Falkirk are concerned, at any rate. But you can be sure that Clyde Bank will not be happy to be the club on whose ground promotion is achieved. And with a great record they've had this season against Falkirk, they come into this match with lots of confidence. It's the fourth league match, and Falkirk haven't managed to win any of them. In fact, at the beginning of the season, the result at Brockville was four goals to nil for Clyde Bank. At that stage, of course, they were leading the season, leading the league very comfortably. So Falkirk trying very hard to make certain they don't have to wait for any information from the Dunfermline. Remember, a point guarantees them a spot in next season's Premier Division of ten clubs. So Jamie McGowan taking a knock early on in that challenge, dropping back into the left-back position. Neil Oliver has taken his place beside John Hughes in central defence. The sweeper is Scott Mother. This cadet. Put in by May. The challenge is made in the edge of the area. And Gary Matthews and the Clyde Van goal relieved there to survive. That all happening right in front of the massed Falkirk support behind the goal. Here's Richard Cadet again. Showing his excellent close control. It's a good turn. The header is on, oh, it's a goal for Falkirk! Nicky Henderson! The goal's been threatened right from the start, and Falkirk go ahead to the delight of their huge travelling support. The great ball fired in there by Weir, met firmly by Nicky Henderson, and Matthews had no chance of stopping it. A push by Cadet. Free kick to Clyde Bank for the foul by Cadet. Sweeney playing it wide. Well won by Weir. And a hefty late challenge there by Ristich on Sutherland. Scott Murdoch with the free kick for Clyde Bank. Awkward. And chance was on there for the equaliser. Well, Tony Parks came for that, Sean Sweeney had the shot in the end, but really it was the elements which caused the principal problem here. You see the ball suddenly holding up as Parks came to meet it. He then had to rush out there, he was challenged very strongly and Sean Sweeney couldn't keep that shot down. Well, a great chance here for Clyde Bank to hit back very swiftly. Free kick putting the keeper under pressure. Sean Sweeney shot just about six inches too high. So that kick out is against the wind by Tony Parks. He did well with that. There's Weir. Spin carrying the ball out there and Clyde Bank have the throw. 
Still unable to get their skillful players on the ball, Clyde Bank. They have men like Cooper and Henderson, and Henry rather, who, who can spray passes around, but they haven't got a chance so far. So a marking job in defence for Falkirk. David Cooper's come across, offering himself to receive the short throw. Kerrigan did well, that's awkward! Well, lucky there, I think, for Tony Parks. He appeared to catch his studs in the turf there as he backpedaled. That might easily have dropped under the crossbar. Well, the throw was a good one, allowing Kerrigan to play this in over his head. That's what annoyed Tony Parks, but you see him there stumbling. We are using his goalkeeper. Well, the clearance not too convincing. Here's Cooper. Looking for Henry, that's a great pass. Brilliant play by Clyde Bank. And a let-off without question for... Falkirk, and it was a glimpse of vintage Davy Cooper. His first real involvement in the play. You look at the quality of the pass into the path of John Henry, and he couldn't get that under the crossbar. Delightful play from Cooper. Well, you can think of very few players in the country who would have picked out that pass for John Henry. And Tony Parks, much relieved to see that over. Turned back by Trainer Matthews timed the volley well. Here's Cooper again. Releasing the pass early for Henry. And Eva called back. Here's Henry with a chance for the equaliser. Clyde Baker scored. And John Henry, who came so close early in the first half. Looks as though he may be spoiling the party for Falkirk. The goal coming in 34 minutes. Henry involved all the time in the build-up. An error in defence. It came off Ian McCall. That's good play by Henry. And a deadly finish. He's always looked the player most likely for Clyde Bank this afternoon, John Henry. This break coming from Ian McCall. Sidestepping Neil Oliver brilliantly. And finding the corner. Falkirk trying to hit back swiftly. Here's Ian McCall. Charles down by Mother. Flanagan has time to turn. Good running from defence by Trainer, but that's over hit. Here's McGowan. McCall takes over. Trying to find his way past Sweeney. That's a very good tackle by the flight bank skipper. McCall anxious to make amends, I think. Sweeney exchanging angry words with Colin Sutherland. Here's Oliver. Well, a real shock for Falkirk. Finding Clyde Bank with the spirit to come back. Pounded there by Jack and Henry in midfield. He's earned the free kick though. Rice sliding it in against the breeze. Here's Ristich. And scrambled away again in front of goal. Well, Drago did Ristich hold his head there. He clearly believes he might have scored. Well, certainly the wind that are bearing in all this as the ball was flighted in by Brian Royce it held up longer I think than Colin Sutherland expected there was Ristich on the turn and the legs of Matthews kept it out Rice with the corner punched by Matthews that's McCall Sweeney the trainer Trying to find Craig Flanagan. That's good goalkeeping by Parks. Acting as an auxiliary sweeper there for his defence. And 
some relief here for Paul Kirk. Eddie May. Faced by Cooper. That's Modoc. They're going through nothing else there with that header. So Clyde Bank can keep the pressure on in the late stages of the first half. Just a little spell of play, but certainly it's a problem for Falkirk. They realise the motion has yet to be earned. And they will receive no favour at all here from Clyde Bank. There's Cooper. That was Jack's header. Steve Jack making a long run from midfield. He and John Henry in that area performing extremely well for Clyde Bank. And the half-time whistle goes. It's been all action and hectic in the first half. Falkirk getting off to the best possible start with Nicky Henderson scoring an excellent opener. Then John Henry there produced a superb finish in 34 minutes to bring Clyde Bank right back into the match and that sets up a dramatic second half at half time it's Clyde Bank 1, Falkirk 1 so Falkirk now with the benefit of a stiff breeze behind looking to clinch their place in the Premier League next season they have news of no doubt at half time that the Fernland seem to be in control against Clyde leading by two goals to nil that'll have been Thumped on to them, I'm sure, by the manager Jim Jeffries. Here's Cadet. Eddie May shot. That was good play by May. He wasn't picked up coming inside, but the chance to test Gary Matthews. Well, the wind can be a problem for attacking sides coming from behind with the passes liable to run away from players, but in this position, it's a big advantage. But the shot was too direct. That's Lansdowne, first of the ball there again. David Weir doing well. The referee insisting that play is held up while he checks and any damage to Alan Lansdowne. Opportunity here for Falkirk from the free kick. John Hughes has made his way into the penalty area as McCall lines up the free kick. Ristich and Hughes in the far post area. There goes Hughes. The brilliant save by Matthews. Well, John Hughes can't believe that now for a very big man. The goal got down swiftly to this. This is really top class goalkeeping. A fine downward header right into the corner and Matthews made that brilliant save denying John Hughes the Falkirk captain said he may came off his head last and the goal kick to Clyde Bank well I wonder if that may prove costly for Falkirk that splendid save by young Gary Matthews Henderson so determined in midfield and going down heavily there, an angry exchange between the players, Jack and Henderson clashing. The referee will take some action here. Well, Stevie Jack's in trouble at least. And I wonder how the referee will deal with this. It was a nasty one, all right. There was Henderson trying to check inside Jack. Now, that was the first bad tackle. Then the tangle of legs as they went down. And the referee taking action here. Well, now, what colour of card is he showing? It looks like red. Jack is leaving the field. And so is Nicky Henderson. Both players ordered off. Well, Henderson was the initial victim of a heavy tackle, but then reacted very angrily. And for the retaliation, he goes off. Mullach, Cooper. Now McGowan. Body check by Henry. It's a free kick to Falkirk. It's 
Here's Ian McCall with a free kick. John Hughes has gone forward again. Well, he almost scored on his last visit into the penalty area. McCall flights it in. And Hughes goes for that. It came off Murdoch. Well, Gary Matthews that time looking a little bit uncertain. Started to come, changed his mind. Hughes almost made them pay. Marking very tight indeed. That's why Rice is taking so long with the ball in his hands. Here's May. And Matthews caught almost there as Hughes came in swiftly. Well, from the throw here, Ryan Rice allowed Eddie May to send over a very good cross. Hughes attacked the ball extremely well. Well, the pass was intended for Walker. Gone for a throw. Well, the Falkirk fans scarcely taking their eyes off the referee, I suspect. The 90 minutes have come and gone. There's a little bit of injury time. a tougher 90 minutes in your career? Never. Never in all the time I've been in football have I experienced uh, the emotion that I went through there for 90 minutes. Got off to a great start. Uh, it was a very uh, strong, tricky win that and Clyde Bank, um, you know, in the first half started just pumping into the box and hoping for a slip. They got a wee break for the goal. Boy took it well and then we thought, God, from, from there on in, we, you know, it was just something that you, you can't even describe really. But at the end of the day, it's not about today, it's about 44 games. We've come out on top, we've brought, beaten a lot of personal club records. You know, we're the first club to, to win the B&Q in the, in the league in the same year, so great credit to the players, and despite everything that's happened, they've never looked for excuses. And I think it's a, a lot of admiration for the, for the squad, not just the, the, the full team that was stripped today. Great, definitely had a great season, great season for Bill Thurman. And, 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 you know, like Bert Payton, and I think he's done wonders there, and I'm, you know, I'm genuinely feel a bit uh, sorry that he isn't joining us in the Premier League. Um, and it, it just shows with the result today, a lot of pressure on them, they had to win that game at Fair Cruz. But as I say, we've picked them by a point, and at the end of the day, you know, we're champions and we're delighted about that. 